Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to continue along with the project service automation stuff and talk a little bit more about kind of the, the actual management piece of the project service portion of it. Last time we talked a little bit about, you know, just some of the basic setup and basic configuration. We took you in and showed you a little bit in regards to the tasks and the items that you wanted to work with, but we didn't necessarily talk a little, you know, specifically about how those individual things tie together and how you want to assign, you know, resources to those items and, and manage some of those booking type situations. So that's really what we want to do in this particular one is look at, you know, from a management perspective, how are you going to maintain some of that and how do you as users go in and work through some of that individual pieces of items that you're going through. So let's look at this a little bit more specifically than we did last time. So I'm going to go into my projects area and last time we just kind of gave you more of a tour. We hit kind of the high points. We didn't necessarily go into anything with with overly great detail this time I want to kind of change that a little bit and, and go through some of this in, in a little bit more item so first let's go ahead and create kind of a new project so I'm gonna go in and create a new project one of the things that you have the ability to do when you create these projects is you can pick different templates. You could create different project templates that already would have a lot of these pre-designed tasks and items um, pre-created for you. So if you do a lot of you know CRM implementations where you have you know specific things scoped out, you could define what those individual pieces would look like. Once you decide what those are, then they'll already have kind of estimated hours, estimated costs, and items associated with it. So then you can work with the items from there. So there I could come in and let's just call this TOD sample. Then I could give it a customer. In this case, we'll just go ahead and pick anybody. Then I could even, if I wanted to kind of define, you know, kind of a starting date uh, for this particular item and it would kind of calculate that information from here. But let's just go ahead and hit save. Now, one of the things that you'll see happens once you kind of create this individual piece is it's actually going to go out and it's going to take and create this work breakdown structure based upon all the tasks and the items that are associated with this. This could take a little bit of time to pre-configure some of that information, but it will get that information set up and working for you based upon those individual items that you worked with. The other thing that it's going to do is kind of pre-set up some of your sales team and our team-based informational items. So now when I come into here, now I can go ahead and I can start adding individual people to this role based upon what it is that I do I want to do. So for example, I let's say I know, you know, I know for example that I'm going to need a developer on this project. So I could come into here and I could hit add new and I could define the person that I want to bring in for this project. Now, if it's a specific person that I want to make sure I'm working with from a time perspective, I can go ahead and define who that specific person is. But if it's just something I'm not exactly sure on, I could then come in here, I could specify the type of role that has been pre-designed within the application that I need a developer. It'll give me a start date and an end date based upon the timeframes that I have. I could define if I want to schedule this person to full capacity, percentage, hours, how I want to distribute this information. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this as a percentage and say 50% of the time. And so now I will see that I'm going to create a generic resource called developer that I can use for part of this application um, as we're moving forward. So as I have my team kind of created, so here I have one with just some generic team members and some, some items that work with it that define when they're going to be working on this particular project based upon what it is that they're doing. This is where I can now go into my work breakdown structure that we showed you a little bit last time. So this is where I can go into my work breakdown structure and I can actually go out and, and work with information from here. One of the nice things about this is, is based upon what it is that I've kind of decided I need to work with, I would also have the capabilities in here if I wanted to, to actually have the system generate the project team for me. So what then actually happens is it goes out and it removes all the roles that have been unassigned to this and it kind of creates a generalized option based upon those situations and creates resources that would then define the individual pieces that we would want to work with. Now, Within this task view, if I have specific items that I want to work with, this is where I could now create a task. So depending upon what you're seeing here, these are the underlining tasks associated with it. So my sprint and then my individual tasks associated with it. Underneath here, I can now create subcasks based upon what it is that I want to work with. So I could now come into here and I could look at this subtask option. I could say create 
and now I'm creating a new subtask, in this case task 2.5, that allows me to define what this task is, what's the mode, what's the category that I want to associate with it, what is the role that needs to be associated with it, is it an architect, a developer, these are all resource roles that we have defined within our application, what is our effort, time periods, all of that information that I could now create from here that would allow me to work with it. In here, I could also come in and define who I want to work on specific stuff. So in this option here for my resources, I could now open up this task that's scheduled to run during this time frame. I could now go ahead and define what specific resources I would want to work with. And you can see here's the resources that I have defined for this project. So I have a developer, a project lead of myself. I could now go ahead and pick myself and that'll allocate me as somebody that's going to be associated with this from a resource perspective. I could continue to add the, myself to individual resources or items as needed to kind of define responsibility for those pieces as you're moving forward. So this gives you the capabilities to now start defining what this looks like from a project management perspective. And so as these things have been allocated and, and resourced out, now people will be able to see what those individual things look like. I could also come in here, and this is where if I wanted to you know, make adjustments to individual things, I could make adjustments to things from that standpoint. So now let's look at this from kind of another avenue. So now I'm Derek, I'm in charge of, of doing some of this individualized information. I need to now be a part of these individual tasks. So now what I could do from an application standpoint is I could now come into project service. And this is where I would see, for example, like my bookings and tasks. So this is what's gonna show me what I have designed to work on for this situation. So these are some of the projects that I'm associated with. And it shows me what specific hours and designs perspectives that I need to have for each one of these individual tasks that I'm working with. So it shows me based upon the items how many hours are scheduled for each one of these individual situations so I can see specifically what items I want to be working in and associating tasks with. So part of this is going to depend upon how scheduled I have been for those individual situations. The other thing that you have to remember is a lot of these hour situations come based upon your work schedule. So you do have to make sure for every resource that's going to be added into here that you go into their work hours and you define, you know, eight to five or whatever. If you leave them set at 24 or seven, then you're going to overbook people based upon those situations. So you want to make sure that you have everybody kind of defined within those items. So now as a user who I'm going to go out and work on this project, now I could come into here and I could go back into project service and I could create some time entries. And so now I could go into my calendar for my time entries and I could create a time entry. So let's, for example, let's go back a previous week here and we'll just do last Friday. So I'm going to create an option here for last Friday and I'm going to say, okay, last Friday I worked for eight hours. Yeah, or actually, let's say I worked for four hours. And I could either submit this as a work absence or a vacation. I worked on project sample two. And I worked on my develop task or whatever task it might be. Um, and then I was as a developer. So now I could go ahead and save this. And that'll show me that, okay, here's the project that I worked on. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another one. And I'm going to say, okay, I also worked for... 3.45 hours or three hours, 45 minutes on tip of the day sample on the develop task. as the architect, that's fine. We'll go ahead and hit save because that was what was associated with my task. So now I can see that each one of these individual items have been listed off here as items that I've worked on or been completed on from that standpoint. Now I entered these information in so they come in within a draft perspective. Now I could go ahead and select these. I could then hit submit. This would then submit these options, tell me what they are from that standpoint, what projects are associated with, and then they would be submitted. So now they would go off to an approver who would now have to approve that information as I'm going through. So this is how your individual users now can start submitting time against these projects as they're working forward.
Now, the other thing that I could do is, you know, let's say I'm out there and, and I'm working on something and maybe I'm going to take, you know, somebody out to eat or, or I have to travel somewhere or something like that. I could also come in and submit an expense for a specific item that I would look at. So I could come into here and I could say, okay, on Monday the 11th, I had lunch. Let's also say that on Tuesday the 12th, uh, this was also lunch. And this was for $35. This was on tip of the day sample. This was meals. I could even go in and add a receipt to this if I wanted to. Um, how, depending upon what I would want to do, I could add a receipt. I don't have a receipt for this one, so I'll go ahead and hit save. But this is how now people working on these projects can now define expenses and items that are associated with it. So now we can start to see specifically within the project itself what's taking place within those items. So as I go ahead and save this, now this will pop in, and now I could go ahead and submit this just like I did for my other options. I hit submit, it shows me here's my items that I'm submitting for that period, submits those off, and now they're waiting for approval from an application perspective. Now I am, let's say, the administrator. So now if I go into project service and I go into project approvals, this is where I now have the ability to go in and, and, and approve stuff. So I can see, okay, I've got some time entries for Derek that I need to go ahead and approve from an application standpoint. I could go ahead and open this up if I wanted to. I could look to see, okay, what specifically happened with this? What type of billing is this? Is this something that was chargeable, non-chargeable, complimentary? We could say it's chargeable. I could even say that we're billing for four hours specifically within this item if I wanted to, and then I could go ahead and approve this. Now, I wouldn't necessarily have to, you know, you have to look at what some of this information is based upon what you're doing. So this is information where you can kind of decide how you want to proc this through, but this is what gives you that capabilities to go out and start approving this information based upon what it is that you're doing. So this is the other one that I've got. I'm going to come into here. I'm now just going to go ahead and approve this. Now I could go in and switch this to expenses. Here's my expense information that needs to be approved. This looks okay. I could now go ahead and define you know, what I want to do. I could edit it, edit the sales price, all of that information, could approve the information from there. It would then approve that information as I'm going through. So now if I go back into project service and I go back into my projects, now I can actually start to see what's taken place within these. So within my tip of the day sample project, I can actually see what type of progress we've started to work with. So now I could go into my tip of the day sample. I could go into my work breakdown structure. And I can start to see, okay, well, we've actually started to do some stuff. Some time has been billed against this individual task. So I can see how much time has been taking place from that scenario. So how much um, item was uh, totally associated with that, how much time has been billed into that situation. And I could look at it from there. I could also come back into, you know, my project tracking. And I could also look at information from a project tracking perspective and be able to see exactly what's taking place within here as well. So this is where now I can see, okay, my actual hours that have been billed towards this individual project, remaining hours, percentage progress, and then it will roll everything up to a project level. And so this is now where you can really start to kind of manage this on a day-to-day -day aspect. And I can even come back into my project itself. If I go back into, for example, tip of the day sample project, and I go down into my status, this is where I can now also start to see what's been taking place within this. So percentage, uh, percentage uh, progress, I can see consumption. I can see what we're doing from a schedule perspe perspective. If we're on time, on budget, this is where I can also say, okay, at this point, everything looks good because we're, there isn't any areas that I need to be concerned with. So this really gives you kind of a nice way to, to delve in and manage this information. Now that's some of the baseline project information items that you have with it. 
in the next video, I want to also take you in and talk a little bit about kind of the sales related scenarios, because one of the key things that they're pushing from a project service automation standpoint is based upon your persona. So how it works in a sales management type situation, how it works in a project management type of situation. What we've been focusing on is kind of the day to day aspects of how that information works. So you can see that perspective. The next time I want to show you more of a, pra a practical application of how things work. But hopefully between this one and the, and the, and the first one, you've kind of see a little bit on how project service starts to take shape from an application standpoint. So that's how we're going to go ahead and roll with it today. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a good one.